Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a, a weathering treatment on this Mike's Meat Market HO scale, 187 scale plastic model that I built a while back. Everything's finished except for building a base and putting a putting a weathering effect on it, make it look aged. So I think that's what we're going to work on in today's video. We're only going to be using two colors to start out with and that is a flat black that's going to be watered down for a wash and a flat gray also watered down for our wash. Both are acrylic and both are flat. Very important that you use flat paint. You don't need a you don't want a shiny surface. And uh, I think we'll start with our black color and I'd like to apply that on all the light gray surfaces first. That'll bring some of the detail out. It's okay if it overlaps on the rest of the building. This will really bring out the details. If it puddles up a little bit, that's okay. Once it dries, the puddle will disappear. And It'll look fine. A little bit of puddling is going to help with the, the look, the overall look. If you're not seeing enough black as you do this with the brush, you may need to add a little more pigment to your paint. And one, one, one wash in this black might not be enough. Sometimes you have to do it two or three times. Sometimes it helps to dab the surface. Your brush has a tendency to pull the pigment right back off sometimes. Dabbing will help with that. You'll have to come back and probably do this black again. Layer it up a few times. Now the rest of this side of the building I want to go over with the gray wash. Using the same brush is fine. Just wipe it out a little bit. This is really going to make it look dirty and get some of these mortar joints to look more like mortar. This looks like a freshly painted building right now. but Our washes are going to change that. Sometimes you can stick your brush down in the bottom of the container and pick up a little more gray than what you're going to get on the top even after you just stirred it. If you want, you could put a fan on your project and it will dry much faster. Only reason we're not using a fan is I really don't want to have the noise in the background. I 
I don't really recommend any other way because you don't want to be responsible for a fire. The fan works fine. You have to be a little bit of patient. Like I've said in some previous videos, if you have trouble being patient, it's good to start another project sometimes and let the one you're working on dry. I, do, I have to do that a lot. This gray color, we probably could even put a little bit of this on the sign. Make it look dirty too. Okay, now we'll let this dry and then we'll come back and take a look at it and see if it needs some another wash. Okay, we only put two colors on here, the black and the gray. We put the gray on the bricks and the black on the lighter color around the sills. And as you can see, now that it's dry, it already has a nice weathering effect. Looks like a dirty building. Okay, very easy. Now that we got those two colors on, I think we're gonna go back, use our black again, and maybe darken up some of these areas where the gray, especially right in here, make it look a little dirtier. Do this a little more random. We don't have to do the whole building. Just put some on here and spread it around most of the building, but you don't have to cover the whole building with big puddles. At the same time, we'll take our black and hit those gray details one more time. There's all kinds of ways that you can do this. This is just the way that I prefer. Probably more time consuming than some of you guys would like, but I like doing it this way. I'm not in a hurry. I like how the gray wash looks on the green. In fact, I wouldn't mind putting a little bit more of the gray on the green in some spots. Not everywhere, just some spots. You can put some of this gray on the windows if you want them to look cloudy. I think as the gray puddles up in the corners, it looks good. Especially on this green. Okay, we'll let this one dry. And then we might be ready to move on to another side once this is dry. We'll have to take a look and see. Uh, like I said in, earlier in the video, this is a good time to start a new project or work on something else or do multiple buildings at once. But to keep it simple, and we're just going to work on this one today. When we come back, it'll be dry and you can see how the second wash turned out. As it's starting to dry, I really like the look of the gray. I think I would like to get rid of any of these shiny red spots and just make the whole building this grayish red looking. So I'm going to take a smaller brush, go around and just try to put the gray in the spots where it seems really red still. For this, I'm using a slightly smaller brush. We don't need to paint the whole side of the building again. I think 
just where the red is standing out. If you put too much gray on there, add some water to it and move it around. I accidentally got too much gray on there now. Or if you feel that you have too much, take something and blot some of it off. Let this dry for a little longer. As it's starting to dry, I think it's looking pretty well. At this time, I'd like to switch to a different color. I use this color a lot. It's called chestnut. And some of these older buildings around the storefront window areas, a lot of this detail work is, would actually be metal. So I want to take some of these areas that would be metal on this end part here and add a little bit of rust in spots. Now we don't want much rust at all, very little. So what I've done now is I put some of the chestnut color is going to be our lighter color and then our secondary color is burnt umber which is slightly darker and for this you want to take a stiff dry brush start with your chestnut Put a little bit on the brush and then dab it on a table or a piece of paper until you're just getting the tiniest specks off of that brush. Okay, now that you have some little specks, you can go in and very sparingly put some of this in the corners. If you put too much on, just dab it with your finger. The acrylic paint that I like to use is, I always make sure I get non-toxic because I do like to touch it and use my fingers to manipulate it. So if you want to know what kind of paint I use, just ask in the comment section and, and I'll fill you in on that. It's inexpensive, about 50 cents a jar. Okay, not much color at all, just a little bit on the edges here and there with the chestnut color and that's going to simulate a little bit of rust on that green metal. Clean your brush out and switch to the burnt umber. You don't have to wait for this first color, the chestnut, to totally dry as long as you're just gently dabbing this one on top. They'll blend together nicely. Same thing. Dab it on the side of your work area or somewhere till you're just getting little specks and then put some of the darker specks in the same areas over top of the chestnut just gently. Same thing if you put too much on just dab it with your finger. Now if you've never done this before or you're using a larger scale, this is HO scale, the larger the scale the easier it's going to be to learn how to do this Everything's much more forgiving on a larger scale if you put too much paint on, etc. So if you don't have any experience in this, maybe you should try it on a larger scale first to get good at it. Alright, that's enough rust on there. As you can see, we didn't use much paint at all for the rust. We'll let this dry for a little bit. 
and then we'll come back and take a closer look and maybe compare it to the other sides that we haven't touched yet. Okay, as it's drying, I've been looking it over. I see a few spots where the original orangish red color is still too bright. So in those spots, I want to take a smaller brush and add a little bit more gray here and there. Trying not to get much Trying not to get it anywhere but those places now, because we have enough gray everywhere else. So you might need to wipe a little bit off of your brush. It's not many. It just seems like it's a little bright right here. Okay, now I'm thinking as I'm doing this, this Mike's Meat Market sign that would probably be, probably be metal and would have some rust on it in a few places. So just like we did on the green frame around the window here, I want to put a little bit of rust on this sign. Same exact technique. Let's we'll start with our lighter color. And put some dabs, some speckles. You want to put it on as light as possible on this scale. You could use a smaller brush, you might have better control. Remember, just, just the tiniest amount, just the tiny little specks. Okay. Same thing, switch back to our burnt umber. Some test dabs. And put some of the burnt umber in a few places as well. Okay. Starting to look rusty. Okay. It always helps to put a fan on your work area to help these acrylic paints dry. They'll dry much faster with a fan, but I don't want to have a fan blowing in the background making a bunch of noise. Uh, one thing I also noticed as we've been working on this is I haven't touched the chimney up there, and the chimney's going to need the same wash, same washes. So we might as well hit the chimney as well. If you get any of this gray on the roof, I know you might be using a different building, it's not going to matter because we're going to do a gray wash on top of this black roof and make it look weathered as well. As I'm putting on the rust, I keep thinking the sign would probably have some rust streaks, streaks running down the building. So I want to take the chestnut color, and, and I have a watered down version of that. Just add some water to it, and make a wash. And for this we're going to use a really small brush. And we want to apply just a little bit on the edges of the brick here as water may have ran down the edge of the sign.
It's not going to show up real bright because it's so thinned down. If it doesn't show up the way you like it, you can put some more pigment in there or do a few washes until you get that desired look. At the same time, I see some light areas on the top where the bricks are gray and the, the wash came off and didn't fill those areas in like I, like I wanted. I'll go back with this artist brush and just gently put some black in there. Sometimes you have to go back with a smaller brush or you have better control. There we go, that's going to make that look dirtier. Maybe the same with the top of the windows. And this black wash with a smaller brush to get some of these details that didn't show up like I wanted the first time. If you put too much on, it's pretty forgiving. Once that dries, it's probably going to blend in and look fine. Definitely put too much there. If you put too much in one spot, just take a paper towel, dab it off. All right, let this dry some more. Make sure you keep looking it over as it dries. You're gonna see some spots you might wanna darken up with your artist brush. I like to darken up some of these spots underneath this molding. If it looks too dark now, it's not, it's not going to dry that dark. Once it dries, it, it'll spread out. And... Okay, just let that dry now. As I mentioned before, these are acrylic paints. Um, what The paint that I originally painted the building with first before we did the washes was just regular house paint. I use a lot of acrylic regular house paint on many of my projects, so if you already have some house paint, you can use that. I uh, just recommend wearing gloves because it's not non-toxic like our wash paint. but there's no reason why you can't use regular house paint on these projects. I do it all the time. You buy a whole gallon, it literally lasts you a lifetime on something this small. And in these little containers that I'm using, there are some home food delivery services. And a lot of the food comes in these little containers. And rather than throwing them away, I save those containers and fill them up with paint. So if you have gallons of paint and you don't want to lug them around, just get some smaller containers, fill them up. I like the ones from the home food service because they're clear, you can see through them, see what color you have. Just a little tip, I wanted to pass along. As it's starting to dry, I'm looking over where we put the rust lines coming down from the Mike's Market meat sign. I think those will look better with another coat of, of our chestnut. So with a really small brush, if you have one even smaller than this, I probably do somewhere. It might work even better. But I do want to make this line a little darker. I 
like I say, you, it's such a thin wash, you might have to do that two or three, four times to get the look you want. Like I mentioned before early on in the video, there are lots of techniques for weathering, lots of products you can use, powders, all kinds of things, but this is a very inexpensive way of doing this. Now, I've only spent 50 cents each on the two colors, and you know, for a dollar, you can do this. You don't have to buy a bunch of fancy stuff, but the, but it's you know, it's nice to learn how to do it different ways. I think this is a good way for beginners. Just wanted to bring that up. As I mentioned earlier, I like to keep looking it over periodically as it dries. I see a couple white spots on these tops of these window sills that just seem a little too white for me. So I just want to get a little tiny bit of black and try to make those little spots darker. Not straight black, just our black wash. I might be getting a little picky. It actually didn't look too bad. Okay. Now let's let this dry some more. I think it's starting to look pretty good as it dries. Uh, our rust lines coming off of the sign look pretty good. I'm kind of wondering if we can put a little bit of that burnt umber in there and make it look a little more like rust. You'd have to put just the tiniest bit on here. not going to do much of that. I don't want to mess it up, but I thought a little bit might help there. Very little. In fact, I think we'll do one more wash. On the lines coming down just just a teeny tiny bit. And this one maybe should go around the window since it's so light right here. Okay. I almost keep forgetting about our little chimney up there. That should have a good black wash around the top of it from all the soot and dirtiness coming out of it so around the top put it on pretty heavy then let it dry as I look it over there's some areas that are just too light I would think we're gonna go back with a smaller brush and put some black on those areas They're just too bright compared to everything else So, I do want to get rid of those lighter areas. Darken it up a little bit, make it look a little dirtier. This area 
it seems too light. All right, we'll let this dry and take another look at it when it's once we're there. This can be a time consuming process. That's why I recommend doing multiple buildings at once or doing multiple projects at one time so you're not just standing around waiting for something to dry. I can't stress that enough. All right, now that it's dry, I think you can see the kind of effect you're gonna get if you try this. This is a good inexpensive way to weather a building uh, with little or no experience. Anyone can do this just by watching the video. Uh, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. I had to do it in a hurry today just so we could get the video completed. Uh, there's a lot of other ways to do it. They're probably more expensive, but for a beginner and someone who doesn't want to spend a lot of money, this is a great alternative. All right, as I'm looking it over, it's everything's dry. It's looking pretty good. We've only been using those two colors, the chestnut and the burnt umber for our washes there, for the rust. And then using the gray and the black wash for the bricks. But I keep thinking since we have a red brick building, why not go ahead and, and maybe put a red wash on here I know a lot of bricks have a tendency to break down over time and, and the water kind of turns red, turns red stains from the bricks breaking down, red stains onto the paint, onto the building. I keep thinking some red would look good. I have this Tuscan red I like to use a lot. Same kind of paint, inexpensive. I've watered some down already. And we're going to go in and apply a red wash on here and see how it looks. We're going to avoid our rust because we don't really want to change the look of that. We could have been finished before we done the red wash. I liked how it looked. It had a nice weathered look. But I think this red wash might give us another effect that would look good on a brick building. Now, we'll let this wash dry. I'm going to leave this uh, and then blot some on here, kind of make it fade in. And we'll let that dry and see if the red wash helps it look even more realistic. All right, the red wash is pretty well dry. I think adding the red wash made it look even better. I only see a few spots now that kind of stand out to me that need doctored up a little bit. I see so this is a little too red around this one window and a couple little spots. And for that I, I want to just go in and put a, just a little bit of black. Try to dull these areas down a little bit. And that's that's about it. I kind of I like the way I think I like how it's turning out. You know, this is a nice little project, easy to do. 
can follow along with these videos with any building. One thing I forgot to mention is you do really want to paint your building first. You can do this on a building that's not painted, but it's going to be much harder. If you put a base coat on here, it's going to accept these layers much better. If you put a flat base coat, you can, uh, you know, what the color you want to shine through. You want the building to be red or whatever color. I recommend using maybe spray paint to primer it and then hand paint it. Actually hand painting it is going to help put a texture on there which will also help with our patina effect. I'm going to take a paper towel and maybe blend these a little bit so we don't have any harsh lines. Maybe that will tone this down a little. But here you go. It's looking pretty good for, for the money you would spend to do this. Just a few dollars. We'll go over the colors again. We got our flat black wash that we used. We used a flat gray. Made a wash out of that. We made our final wash with this red Tuscan color. And then we used our chestnut and our burnt umber for the areas where we did the rust. Um, I hope you guys like this video. I hope this information was useful. Hope you learned something. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. More importantly, subscribe and you can see more. Um, we'll probably do some more work on this building later. And we need to still make a base for it. But um, yeah, I think we made some good progress in today's lesson. And I hope you guys try it. If you try it and you're happy, send me some pictures. We'll post them on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon.